Good evening. It is your boy Big D bringing you some Eagles news. It's not breaking news because this happened hours ago and I slept all day and I needed to make a special I made a special announcement video regarding the future of my channel. Highly recommend you go watch that. I really I need you to watch that because it's very important. It'll tell you what my channel will be in the future. Highly recommend you go check that video out. Link will be down in the description box and it'll it'll show up at the end along with the subscribe button. But anyway, with that being said, there's been four, there's been a few moves that have been made today. The first one is wide receivers cro wide receivers coach Mike Grow has been promoted to offensive coordinator. Now, when Frank Reich went to be the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, it was originally it was originally going to be Josh McDaniels before he opted out. Ironically, it was the day after we beat New England in the Super Bowl. McDaniels was the New England offensive coordinator, so instead of getting New England's offensive coordinator, they got ours. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah, it, we didn't we didn't exactly name a new offensive coordinator immediately. I know John D. Filippo went to the Vikings, so he was out of the equation, and we assigned we gave that to the assistant quarterbacks coach. So, the offensive coordinator position was still up in the air. But right now, Mike Groh has been hired. It ultimately came down to him and Deuce Staley. I was almost thinking Deuce Staley was better for the job. I don't know. It was just the way I felt. But Mike Groh is more... Mike Groh has... I truly feel that Mike Groh is more than, more than qualified to be the new offensive coordinator. I mean, he's been, he's been great as a wide receivers coach in history. I mean, he was... He was great with the Bears and he was great with the Rams and those two teams had shitty quarterbacks during his tenure and those receivers managed to be great and he and Alshon have history together and right now he 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 has really been instrumental in turning around this off this wide receiving core he's really helped a lot also with Alshon Jeffrey who has history with Mike Grow so yeah I I definitely feel like Mike Grow deserves it not really much more to say. However, even though Deuce Staley didn't get it, Deuce Staley has been promoted to assistant head coach. It was it was it was announced earlier today that the assistant head coach was being even though he's been assistant head coach, he's now named assistant head coach, he's still gonna be running backs coach. It was either going to be Staley or Grow that was gonna be offensive coordinator. They made Grow the offensive coordinator and they made Deuce Staley the assistant head coach, but he's still the running backs coach. All right. And Deuce Staley has also been instrumental. He's also been great with our running backs this year. Even though there are things that he's done that kind of, that I wish he didn't do, but either way, yeah, he didn't do things perfectly, but he still got the job done, didn't he? He still knew what he was doing in the heat of the moment, and that's what counts. And he'll be the assistant to Doug Peterson. I don't. And as far as as far as how different it is, I don't think it's going to be that much of. I don't think it's going to be that significant because Doug Peterson calls all the plays. But I don't think we'll really know what Staley or Grow do until Doug Peterson says in his post game interviews or in interviews regarding practice that these guys are doing this. These guys have been, have done a great job improving this guy. Things of that nature. So we won't really know what they bring to the table until Doug Peterson tells you. Doug Peterson will be the first one to tell you what they bring to the table. I believe I believe the next time they interview him, he'll mention it. In other news, uh, Chris, Chris Paduzzi will, will be stepping down as the head trainer. The guy who looks after the injured players. He will... He'll be stepping down after this season. He joined in 1999 and he was accepted. He was named the head trainer in 2013 when Coach Chip Kelly arrived. And it's been saying that under Chip, he's helped integrate innovative sports science ideas into day-to-day -day duties and the Eagles routinely. The Eagles have been suffering fewer serious inju injuries than most other teams in the NFL. And he, and he was... He was kept around when Doug Peterson was named the coach, and 
after this season. I mean, we we lost we lost numerous guys. We lost Carson Wentz. We lost Jason Peters. We lost Darren Sproles. And even though we lost all these guys, we still won the Super Bowl. And and Purdue, and here's what Purdue, Purdue said in the statement. He said, "This was not an easy decision, but one I have to put." One I've put much thought into, and I appreciate the organization's support and wish them all the best in the future. I'm so proud of what we've been able to achieve together. To bring the Lombardi Trophy to Philadelphia this year was an amazing experience, and I believe we've built a strong foundation that the team can continue to build on for years to come. So that's nice. I, I, it almost, I almost... I almost feel like he feels responsible for some of those injuries and in that there was things that he could have done better. I almost feel like I almost feel like he feels responsible. I think he feels responsible for that and I think and I think he's just ready to call it quits. I don't know who I don't know who they're going to hire to replace him. But all I know is after this season, after the the significant number of injuries that we've gotten this season, I mean there were a shit ton of them. Uh, he feels he's just going to call it quits. But yeah, good luck to him. He's been, he, he's done a great job th during his tenure in Philadelphia. And I thank him for all he's been able to do. But yeah, that that we yeah, he, we do kind of need to move on. In other news, in a little more news, this is kind of pointless news to bring up, but I just wanted to bring it up. It appears that the Eagles do not plan to re-sign Jalen Watkins, so Jalen Watkins will be gone. He will be a free agent this season. All I gotta say to that is, thank God. Thank God, man. Quite possibly one of the sorriest defensive backs I've ever fuck seen in my entire life. Damn, this, holy fuck, this guy's fucking garbage. I, he's, the, he's the underachieving brother of Rams receiver Sammy Watkins. I mean, Sammy Watkins is pretty goddamn solid with the Bills and now Rams. But Jalen, on the other hand, holy shit, this guy's trash. I'd take, I'd take motherfucking Kirk Coleman over your ass. I'd take Kirk Coleman. I'd take Nate Allen. I'd take Blaine Bishop. I'd take Ellis Hobbs. And who's the other guy's name? Mach Victor Macho Harris. Victor Macho Harris. I take all of them. I take every last one of them over this sorry piece of shit. All right. I didn't really know how trash he truly was. I already knew he was garbage in 2015 when he was missing tackles after tackles, especially in the game against the Cardinals. And his significant season of trash was in 2016 when Ron Brooks got injured against the Vikings and and they moved they they moved Malcolm Jenkins to slot corner and Watkins was the new starting safety. Holy fuck, this guy was garbage. There's one play that stuck out to me the most. I mean, there's been numerous plays like in the in, against the Ravens when when Steve Smith senior went over went over Jalen Mills for a touchdown. Watkins didn't even try to fucking cover that. He just fucking stood there like a deer in the headlights. Not knowing his head from his fucking ass. And just let Smith just walk right in. Or against the Seahawks when he was covering Jimmy Graham. And Jimmy, and Jimmy Graham just shrugged off. He's like, get the fuck off of me, you sorry ass bitch. And then just ran right in for a touchdown. But the one play, the one significant play that sticks out the most was when we faced the Giants last year. The only time we've lost, the only time we lost to them in the last four years I mean, we own the Giants every time we play them. They're the Eagles' bitches. But the one time we lost was in New York. There was one play where the Giants wide receiver Roger Lewis got a touchdown. Watkins ran into his own guy. I mean, the one guy was trying to cover him. I believe it was Malcolm Jenkins or Rodney McLeod or Leotis McKelvin. I don't remember who it was, but Watkins ran into his own guy. Basically fucked up his coverage, and Roger Lewis got an easy touchdown. It's like... Yeah. Get this clown out of here. I swear to God, man, I do not know who the fuck will be dumb and stupid enough to pick this sorry bitch made jabroni up. I don't know who the fuck will be stupid enough to sign this jamoke. I really don't, man. I really don't. 
But yeah, kind of a pointless thing to bring up, but you have to understand, man. Jalen Watkins, that's a so that's a sorry motherfucker. If I had to if I if I do if I make top 10s, if I do decide to make top 10s, one thing I didn't mention in my special announcement video, if I actually do make top 10s, which do which in my opinion require editing, if I do unedited rough drafts, if I had to make a top 10 list Worst Eagles of 2017, which is going to be pretty hard to make considering that we were great this year and we won the Super Bowl. But I'd probably put Jalen Watkins within the top three. Maybe Isaac Samalo above him. And Isaac Samalo, he need to get the fuck released also. I mean, that guy was trash. Even though Chance Warmack was a disappointment, he was still better than him. But anyway, those are, those are, those are the moves that we've made so far. Anyway, like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll catch y'all later. Y'all have a good one.